Hello everyone, and this is an unexpected entry in the Lotus Diaries for you. Now I apologise, it's been a little while since my last update, about a week to be precise, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, some of the things that I'm working on are very large, so are taking quite some time to put together and I want to make sure that I do them right. And number two, the weather has continued to be absolutely abysmal here, making filming for any sort of period of time very, very difficult and almost impossible to organise. Uh, thirdly, I have been, as mentioned in the last video, off to spa and doing a few other things, so obviously my time has been a little bit limited. However, as you all see from the pictures in front of you, you'll notice that I have managed to do one thing, which is that I've taken the car on track at last. Now, this was totally unexpected, and I have to say thank you very much to Alex at Magnitude Events for making this possible. Basically, I had been speaking to a few guys about filming their car for my owner profile section, on the uh, YouTube channel and they had both been coming to this track day and said that I should come down and have a watch and you know it'd be a really good thing to go to and there'd be a uh, great atmosphere and I looked at the schedule for the day and I noticed that as part of the day they were doing passenger rides in an Evora 400 so I spoke to the organizers and I said to them if you're doing passenger rides in a 400 as part of your official schedule then obviously you don't have a problem with the noise that the car makes which a lot of other circuits do and they said nope it'll be fine come down and have a great day it's gonna be a really nice and gentlemanly uh, tractor which of course is what I want because although I've bought the car I cannot afford to buy another one or to fix it if I bend it so that was great so I came down and the weather was as you can see for a good part of the day was pretty abysmal we actually wound up doing water clearing laps as well as parade laps but by about uh, one o'clock we managed to get out on track and you know what the car performed absolutely brilliantly i've never been around hethel before it's a very tight twisty little track quite technical but it has two nice long straights to begin with i was obviously taking things quite easy because you know not only was the uh, circuit unknown to me and the weather was pretty poor but because of the way that Hethel has been built and what it was and where it is, there is basically zero runoff. Now there's a couple of areas of this track that the photographer couldn't get to and those have, I would say, about two to three feet at most of runoff between yourself, you know, the edge of the circuit and the barrier. So if you make a mistake there, you're going to have a pretty bad day. Now you may be thinking, okay, lovely slideshow, but where's the video? Well, unfortunately, because Hethel is not just a circuit, it is Lotus's own private test facility, their policy on filming is quite strict. And although I know that there are plenty of videos floating around on YouTube from people that have filmed on track, I did ask in advance whether this would be possible, and I was told that unfortunately with the uh, amount of time that we had to organise things that it, it would not be okay. So the next time I get out on track I am going to try and get some footage for you, but for now these photos will, I'm afraid, have to do. The car was absolutely brilliant. Um, there was a really good mixture of cars, everything from basically the early LAN and the Europa. There was quite a few of the M100 LANs. as a good selection of Elises from very early cars to sort of much more modern ones. And there were a few Exiges out as well. And there was even one other Evora 400 there looking very, very nice in its uh, Essex blue livery. Now the 400, this is my first time on track with it obviously, and it performed just so well, so intuitively I think is probably the best way that I can describe it. You know, at no point in time did the car ever scare me or make me think that I sort of got into a corner quicker than I imagined. You know, your confidence level is already very high in the car and it's always talking to you, it's always giving you the feedback that you need. I got to try the car in a couple of different modes, in both Tour, which is the standard mode, and then as the weather improved, I switched to Race. I would say the biggest difference that I felt between the two is that at the second hairpin on the track, which is between the two straights, somebody had put a little bit of fuel on it earlier in the day, and it had stayed pretty wet and damp, so it was probably the greasiest corner on the circuit. And in Tour mode, the car will cut power to prevent understeer. And in race mode it won't. So in race mode, when you sort of fed the power in, you could then feel the front end start to wash wide because the car was understeering. So I actually preferred race mode in that instance because it gave you a really, really good idea of what the grip level was like. So you can sort of modulate your throttle uh, accordingly. Now, 
There's no timing allowed on the day, and I was definitely not out there to set a hot lap time. Uh, I was reaching speeds of about 115 mile an hour as you sort of come up towards the pits, and it peaked as the day then dried out. I got about 130 mile an hour on the sort of back straight before you break for the little chicane that they've got in there. Um, the car sounded amazing. Uh, I'm told it sounded great from the outside. Obviously, I wasn't there, and but you could still hear it inside, even with a helmet on. And one thing worth mentioning is that I've had a couple of people actually ask me how tall I am. And for whatever reason, they seem to think I'm quite tall. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm only about five foot ten, and with a helmet on, I had to adjust the seat quite a bit to try and find a sort of semi-comfortable position. Now, I was wearing a motorcycle helmet, but I don't think there's really that big a difference in size between a bike helmet and a dedicated car helmet. But even so, I had to be very careful because the helmet in certain in my normal seating position was touching the roof of the car. So if you're already a very, very tall driver, you know, if your headroom is already quite limited, then you may find that it's not possible for you to be in the car with a helmet on in its current configuration of flight. You may need to have a different seat. I'm expecting this will be something that's not so much of a problem in the Sport 410 when they make it because that has different seats and I believe you set a lot lower in those. So that should give you the extra headroom that you require. Otherwise the car was great, grip level was very very high from the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tyres and the brakes were absolutely sensational. Plenty of feel, plenty of feedback and despite the fact that I was out there longer than probably a lot of the other cars, especially the classic cars that could only do about 3 or 5 laps before their brakes overheated, I never really had any problems with my brakes. Eventually after about I'd say 10 laps I was starting to get maybe a tiny bit of judder from them but at no point did I feel like I got any fade. So. Overall, I had a really, really great day, and I want to say thanks to Alex at Magnitude for obviously organizing the day, and Charles Robinson for taking these fantastic photos, and I thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry it's a slideshow, not a video. Uh, as usual, please subscribe to the Facebook and Instagram pages that I have in addition to this one, and I hope to see you guys very, very soon. There's a lot of great content coming, so please stay tuned, and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.